Uh, we will not waver in our commitment to see that justice is done for this terrible act in Benghazi. And make no mistake, justice will be done. That was the President of the United States. Remember the mantra, Mr. Chairman? Al-Qaeda's on the run. GM's alive. Osama bin Laden's dead. Al-Qaeda's on the run. When really they're standing at the front door of our facility in Benghazi, getting ready to murder our ambassador and burn it down. There is nothing phony about four murdered Americans in Benghazi. And if he thinks there is, I'd encourage him to look at the autopsy photos. People have begun to lose trust in the institutions of government. And if they want to use the word phony for that, they, they need to get out of Washington more and go to real America. Washington is its own ecosystem. They're, they wouldn't like it if I cured malaria tonight. I mean, because I'm a Republican. So, of course, they're going to be critical. Well, Dana, I want to congratulate the New York Times. It only took 15 months for them to figure out how to spell Benghazi. <laughs> I'm not telling you how to do your job, but I'm going to ask you some questions. Can you tell me why Chris Stevens was in Benghazi the night that he was killed? Do you know why an ambassador asking for more security Days and weeks before he was murdered and those requests went unheeded? Do you know why no assets were deployed during the siege? And do you know whether the president called any of our allies? Why was Susan Rice on the five Sunday talk shows? Do you know the origin of this mythology that it was spawned as a spontaneous reaction to a video? Reasonable minds can differ on what the most important unresolved issue is. For me personally, why our administration missed episode of violence after episode of violence in Libya leading up to September 11th, 2012. And it they stood their post. The least we can do is stand this meager post that we've been assigned and demand that this administration speak the truth to the people it's supposed to serve. This was never about a video. It was never spontaneous. This is terror. And I want to know why we were lied to. So if anyone wants to know what difference does it make, if anyone wants to ask what difference does it make, it always matters whether or not you can trust your government. And to the families, we're going to find out what happened in Benghazi, and I don't give a damn whose career is impacted. We're going to find out what happened. As a prosecutor for 16 years, this is not my first uh, death threat. I'm always happy when it doesn't come from my wife. Uh, and this one did not. So <laughs> I'm going to be fine, and it's not going to keep me from doing my job. Good man. I need all the evidence, all the documents, unredacted, and I need access to all the witnesses. You can draw whatever conclusion you want, but you can't right. draw any conclusions if you don't have the evidence. Okay, so you can say whatever else you want. He's not smart. His suit doesn't match. Bad haircut. No one will tell you I'm not fair. And at the end of this, I think you'll say the same thing. Well, Ms. Smith and, and Mr. Woods, I want to uh, express on, on a personal level. Uh, my, my gratitude and my sympathy to you for the loss of your sons and to everyone that loved your sons uh, and all the four victims uh, of Benghazi. And the word closure is used all the time. And my experience is it's only used by people who have never suffered the loss of a child because there is no closure. I can't offer you closure. What I hope we can offer you is the truth, facts, justice, and let you do with that what you need to do as you walk down that road we call grief. I am asked about Benghazi and, in effect, about your sons more than any other issue. So the jury has not forgotten.